So you guys are going to help me, okay? They're like, what's Christy done to us? You don't have to sing anymore and you don't have to dance anymore. Unless you think we should do 12 Days of Christmas. Yeah. yeah. We may have a dance to 12 Days of Christmas that they think we should do. All right, so lately, recently, on Wednesday nights, we have been talking about... You can or you can stay up here and help me. Hmm? Philippians, right? We even have a cool little song, right? Well, it wasn't that long ago. But before we started talking about the Christmas story, we were talking about Philippians. And during this, we, we were studying how Paul had an awesome attitude, right? Where was Paul when he was writing Philippians? In jail. Ha, see, I, I do teach. So he was under house arrest. He was in jail. And he still had an awesome attitude. So right now during um, Christmas, we, we have a lot of things that make us happy, right? You guys help me out. What's, what's something that makes you happy during Christmas? Jesus' birth. Of course, that's the church answer, but yes, you're right. Family. Family, yes. So how many of you spend a bunch of time with family this week? How many of you make Christmas cookies with grandma or mom or somebody in your family, right? What's something that's awesome this week? Giving. Giving. See, they know they're in church and they're supposed to say this stuff. One of you haven't said, what's, what's an awesome thing? Um, caring. Caring for other people during Christmas. Like, what happens during Christmas? What's some of your favorite things that you do during Christmas, Jeremiah? Um, we have to love everyone. <laughs> I'm really teaching them the right things to say. You get presents. Thank you. You get presents. I don't need both mics. Yes, thank you, Addie. You knew what I was looking for. There is good things that happen, like spending time with our family and stuff, and that warms our hearts, right? But if you all admit it, what's one of your favorite parts? Getting presents. Getting presents. That's part of it, and that's okay. So a lot of times we focus in life on the stuff that brings us happiness, right? So again, let's let's focus some more on presents. What's what's a present that will just make you the happiest kid in the whole wide world? Madden 19. (laughs) Madden 19, oh yeah. For the Xbox or the PlayStation? Xbox. Xbox. What's the newest Xbox? I think 1X, they have so many syllables now. A Nintendo Switch. A Nintendo Switch, let me tell you. What is the best present? God. God, you're right. (laughs) But how about Kirby that goes with the Nintendo Switch? (laughs) I I would want a Nintendo Switch with the Kirby with robots. Robots, something, I don't know. Or Super Smash, right? So you can be Kirby again. And I do want that too. I might dip that for me for Christmas. For Christmas, that's right. Anybody else? What's something? They'll make you the happiest kid in the world because you get it for a present. A zombie Nerf gun. A zombie Nerf gun. Nerf guns, there we go. PlayStation. PlayStation 4 Pro, right? With the new Spider Man game, right? Yes, yeah. A GoPro camera. Oh, a GoPro camera. He's going cheap. <laughs> what would make you the, the best Christmas present? Um, what are you wanting for Christmas more than anything else? A princess dress. A princess dress. Knew that was coming. Anybody else? All right, a couple more. My own YouTube channel. <laughs> giant RC truck. Oh, a giant RC truck. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, Patriot tickets. Oh, Patriot tickets. That would be not the Steelers. Not Not the Steelers. That's right. That's right. There we go. You brought the house down, Cody. You brought the house down. 
So a lot of times we focus on, on the stuff that's going to make us happy. Now, we are sitting in church, so we sit here and we clasp our hands and we say Jesus and we say God. But us adults have presents that we want. We need a new phone, right? We want, we want to play the Xbox with our kids. I mean, stuff sometimes is our focus for making us happy. All right, so kids, we talked about this a lot on the Wednesday nights. Who can tell me the difference between happiness and joy? Um. You don't know, okay, that's all right. It's different because it's, you're not really happy out of flat. I know it, but. I know you know it. It's not in my but, but they make you nervous, it's okay. No, just do. So joy is deeper, right? That's mm -hmm. what you're trying to say. Mm -hmm. Happiness is like on the surface and joy is deeper, mm -hmm. right? That's what you were trying to say. Addie, can you help us? Joy lasts longer than happiness. That's very true. Joy lasts longer than happiness. That's very true. You guys did great. So happiness is a feeling, right? It's like an emotion. Um, but joy is a way of looking at life. It's an attitude. Um, emotions can be something we experience, like opening up a Nintendo Switch on Christmas morning, right? But joy is that attitude or mindset that we have in all circumstances, whether they're good or they're bad. So I've got something to help illustrate this. And you know, if it works on YouTube, it's going to work in front of 200 people. And I have practiced, so let's see. I am dangerous. So what do I have here, kids? Fire. Okay. I have a Oh no. What are you doing? So this is our happy guy. Can you guys name him? What should we name him? He needs a name. Gerald. Bob. Gerald. I like Gerald. This is Gerald. Gerald is happy. All right. So the fire. You guys don't trust me very much. The fire. I know, they're already holding their ears. The fire is like those bad circumstances that happen in life, right? So they're the bad stuff that sometimes happen to us in life that come along and make us not so happy. What's some bad circumstances? You guys can tell me real quick. What's some bad circumstances? I'm sorry? Floods, uh, weather, tornadoes, hurricanes, all that good stuff. All that good stuff, yeah, all that bad stuff. Thank you, Aiden. Hurricanes. Uh, robbers. Robbers, yeah, because. Tornadoes that you pick up your house. The tornadoes when they pick up your house. What about the stuff that you guys face day to day? The devil, what's something that happens at school that like stress you all out and worry you? I know. Caroline? We don't get to do anything except work. You have to work so much, right? Us adults have that same problem, right? What else? Bullies, yes. When kids at school are not nice to us. When we're trying to make friends, right? Sometimes that's really hard, right? Yes. Anybody else? What do you think, Jeremiah? Kicking, us. kicking you. That is definitely a not so nice person. Um, wild animals. Wild animals. Do they come to your school frequently? A snake came to your school? I think that's definitely. So what happens when our happiness comes near? Took a little bit. It, it pops his happiness. Is Gerald happy still yet? I, I don't think Gerald make, Gerald's in heaven. No, I don't think he goes to church. Gerald's in heaven. All right, what happened to our fire though? Can you guys see? It went, out. it went out, huh? It went out. So here's, here's the lesson in that. So the bad stuff that happens, these bad circumstances, they will pass, okay? So the air from the balloon blew out the fire, right? So the fire does go out, but is Gerald happy? No. And sometimes, sometimes the bad stuff that happens in our life, we never can get the same happy back, right? But they do pass, and with time, things get easier and easier. And then sometimes it just goes back to normal. Poor Gerald's not going back to normal, but sometimes it goes back to normal, right? Mm -hmm. So Gerald had happiness. All right, so we have another friend. Rosita. This is Rosita. Don't tell my 
secret yet. It's Rosita. Rosita? Yeah. You pick Gerald. Somebody else needs to pick a name. Gabriel? Because we're biblical. Okay. So, you don't want to be mean to Gabriel because he's an angel? What's it's wintery. Okay, so here's the difference. Did we decide on a name? Yeah. <laughs> Bob. Bob has joy. <laughs> Bob has joy. That was your name, wasn't it? So Bob has joy in his life. Now what happens when Bob goes through the fire? What happened? He's not popping. Why? Because he has joy, right? So what was on the inside of my other balloon? Nothing. Not, air. 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 Some may say hot air because I was the one that blew it up. But it had air in it, right? So there was nothing else inside it, so it just went away. What's, what can you guys tell the people out there that can't see what's inside this balloon? So they were really nervous. I was getting ready to pop a water balloon all over them. But that wasn't what happened. Because the water is in it, what happened? The water protects it from popping. Yeah. So there's a Bible. There's, huh? Like hold it there so it'll eventually pop and get everything wet. Yeah, no, no. So remember what I said about happiness. It's an emotion and, and joy is our attitude, right? So Bob has joy in his life so he didn't pop. So even though, think about this. Did he still feel the heat? Yeah, Bob still felt the heat. Yeah, he's probably a little bit worried and scared, kind of like you all that were sitting right underneath me. Were you just a little scared, Avon? Just a little. You thought you were going to get splashed. She was a little bit scared. Oh, you wanted to get splashed? Bob was scared. Bob was scared, and it still was a little bit uncomfortable, and it still hurt a little bit, but he got through the circumstance, right? Just like Paul did. I'm not going to hand you a water balloon in the middle of church. Just saying. So... Bob had joy. And if we have that joy, remember, well, actually, living water. This is what I want to I want to close you guys with. There's a Bible scripture that talks about living water. Now, in the Bible, who is living water that we can fill ourselves with? Jesus. That's right. And in John 4, 13 and 14, Jesus said to her, everyone who drinks of this water will be thirsty again. He was talking to the, to the woman at the well, and he was talking about the, the well water, okay? He said, everyone who drinks of this water will be thirsty again, but whoever drinks of the water that I will give him will never be thirsty again. The water that I will give him will be like a spring of water welling up to eternal life. There's another passage that says it becomes a fresh bubbling spring within them, giving them eternal life. John 7, 37 says on the last day of the feast, the great day, Jesus stood up and cried out, if anyone thirst, let him come to me and drink. So the joy is having what inside us? Water, water which is living water. Jesus, living water, which is Jesus. When we have Jesus inside us, right, we have real joy and we can withstand that fire, right? Good job, guys. Good job. Pastor Allen. Didn't they do a great job? I love the part where, what do you want for Christmas, or what's Christmas about? So, Christy, you have taught them the right answers. I heard Jesus, I heard God, I heard, yeah, it's all, and it is true, it is right. And one of the things I want you to think about, and I want to share with you just quickly this morning, think about when you were a kid, think about when you were this age, or maybe younger, maybe a little older, maybe sometime this week you'll experience this, after all the presents are opened under the tree, you remember how many presents when you're a kid you saw all under the tree and it's like that's mine and that's mine and that's not yours but that's mine and you start picking them out I want this one or that one's mine and you open them all up and then all of a sudden you look and the tree is bare there's nothing under it and then all of a sudden you look in the place where the tree once was and it's not there anymore I remember as a kid thinking wow what's happened it's gone and what we learned from that wonderful object lesson is that when we just build our life on happiness with things and stuff, it can be here today and gone tomorrow. 
But here's the beauty of Christmas. While we enjoy all that God has given us and all the blessings he's given to you and me, there's something he places in our lives that continues on. It's the joy of the Lord. Amen? Now, I know some of you have had great joy toward your pastor this holiday season. I have unwrapped my fifth fruitcake. And I just want you to know that I like to give presents as well as get them. But I also know that they're good until 2035, so my kids will get them in their stocking or my grandchildren won. But all the different gifts and presents that you may like or you may think, eh, I need to re-gift this, there's one thing you'll never want to do with Jesus. You'll want to keep him in your heart and life, but you'll also want to make sure that other people know him and you'll want to re-gift him too. Are you with me? And so what I want to leave you with this morning, when, when you go out uh, tomorrow, <clears throat> Christmas Day, and you enjoy time with your family, I want to share something with you you can take with you right now, and it's joy. That's what the kids have talked to us about. That's what the whole idea of Christmas is about. As a matter of fact, until Jesus came from heaven to earth, we did not know what joy was. We had no clue what joy was. What we thought it was was happiness, right? I'm happy, but happy is momentary, and happy leaves you what, guys? Empty. Happiness will leave you empty because it will come and go, but joy will always be there because joy is connected with Jesus living inside of us. Now, <clears throat> I love acrostics, as most of you know. And when I think about joy, and I think about what the, the, the true source of joy is, it's got to be Jesus. Jesus is the source of our joy. Do you remember the passage of Scripture <clears throat> where the angels are talking to the shepherds, and, and the first thing they said was, don't be afraid. Until Jesus came from heaven to earth, that is the ruling emotion in people's lives. As a matter of fact, there are many people in here right now, you don't have to tell me, there's something you're afraid of. There's something you fear. As a matter of fact, all of us as babies, as children, we were born with two in inert or inbred fears. We have a fear of falling and we have fear of sudden noises, sudden loud noises. How many here were bracing yourself and you saw uh, Christy start taking that balloon over that, that, that flame? How many here is getting ready for it? You want to know why? Because that's one of those internal fears you were born with. But there's one more that we overlook. The internal fear of what will happen to me when I leave this life and I go into the next. And that's where Jesus comes in. Because when you have Jesus Christ in your heart and in your life, he is the source of all joy. He's where joy comes from. He's where joy emanates from. As a matter of fact, everywhere you would see Jesus go on this earth, he was bringing good news of great joy. What is the joy? That God lives in you. He's not just God with us now. He's Emmanuel. He's God in us. He lives in us. So the source of joy is in, found in Jesus Christ. It's not found in anything else. But I also want you to notice also, I want you to notice what the O stands for. The focus of our joy is who? others. The focus of our joy is others. We want to give joy to other people around us. Have you given someone joy this morning? Huh? Have you complimented someone? I want you to turn to the person sitting your beside, you're sitting beside of and say, Jesus loves you and so do I. Go ahead. Pass that joy. Pass that joy. And I want to tell you something. That's not just something we say. That is a reality. Because Jesus is here right now, he loves us, and he wants us to share that good news with others. Wednesday evening, after Bible, after our Christmas service, I went out to a restaurant to eat. And I was standing there in line, I put my order in, this young lady was kind of looking at me, she just kind of going through, it was a little bit later in the afternoon, evening, and uh, she said, well, where have you been? I said, man, I've been to church. She said, really? I said, oh, let me tell you. I said, we had a blast. And she said, look on her face. Are you kidding? No, I love going to church. She looked at me really weird and I said, I'm telling you, it's the greatest thing. It's the highlight of my week. You ought to come and be a part of what I get to be with and who I get to be with every day of the week. And she said, are you serious? I said, I'm serious. I said, I have more fun now that I know Jesus than I've ever had in my life. Just a way of sharing that joy. The joy is for others. Did I know this young lady? No. But you know what? I want to pass the joy. We live in a world, folks, listen to me carefully. <clears throat> we live in a world where bad news travels at the speed of posting, tweeting, 
et cetera, and so forth. Amen? We live in an age right now where when it's bad news, we can't wait to blow it up. I'm going to tell you something. I believe we need to go out of this building with a joy unspeakable that's full of glory that will not leave you empty, but will be inside of you something that grows and thrives and give it to someone who needs joy. When you leave this building this morning, I'll promise you one thing. You will find someone who needs joy. You'll find someone who's worried about the stock market. You'll find someone who's worried about Washington. You'll find someone who's worried about the economy. You'll find someone who's worried about filling the line. You've already started, haven't you? Do you know what we need to know? You know what we need to do? We need to go out and say, listen, Jesus Christ will give you a joy that supersedes all the stuff of this earth. Can I tell you something? The stock market, politics, the economy, and everything else doesn't even register where we're going to spend a never-ending eternity with him. That's good news of great joy. Amen? Joy is to be focused on others, but here's where it all comes together. In order to understand joy, you have to choose joy. The one word I want to leave you with this morning is I choose joy. I choose joy. Say that with me. I choose joy. Now, I want to tell you why it's important for you to remember that and to recite that. I choose joy. I'm going to see a lot of stuff that I don't like. I'm going to see a lot of stuff I don't agree with. I'm going to be on the road for about four hours, in just a few minutes. You ever experienced road rage? Am I the only one? You ever get upset when someone doesn't use a turn signal? Or when they use a turn signal, they don't go? He's gone from preaching to meddling. <laughs> We're all there. I want us to slow down. I want to say, you know what? I choose joy. I choose joy. I, I'm going to walk up to that person that's hard to get along with, that person that may not be in a good attitude, that person that may not be in a good mood, that person that may be having a rough day. And I want to tell you, especially over this next week, if you travel, the people who are having to work during those times, please choose joy. Give joy. I used to tell people I'm real careful about giving others a piece of my mind. The way I remember things anymore, I want to keep all I can get. <laughs> I don't want to keep that. I don't want to give them a piece of my mind anymore. I want to give them my opinion anymore. I don't want to give them what I think anymore. I choose to give joy. I choose to give something that the world doesn't have to offer. Did you hear that? You know what the world has to offer? It's what was inside that balloon that popped. What was inside that balloon that popped? Nothing. I choose to give people the person who has made me worthwhile. The person who's given me significance. The person who knew me better than anyone else, and yet that person chose to die for me and to love me. Now, friends, that's a joy unspeakable that's full of glory. Amen? I'm going to ask the worship team if they'll come back and get a song for us. But let me pray with you right now. Will you stand as they're coming? God... I'm so thankful, Lord, for this service. <clears throat> God, I'm so thankful for the people who are here right now. And Lord, especially for our Colby kids. God, what an awesome job they have done. Lord, I thank you for Christy. I thank you for the volunteers, for Miss Aaliyah, God. Lord, the, how they are just pouring into these children's lives. And I pray, God, that what they have taught us this morning and what we understand, Lord, is that happiness will come, happiness will go. It is empty when we fill it with the things of this world. But Lord, when we have you, when we have joy, when we have the true reason for this season, God, you in us, Father, we have a gift that we can give past the 25th of December. We have a gift that we can give the 26th. We can give January the 1st. We can give July the 4th. We can give September the 10th. We can give November the 23rd. We can give every single day. But Lord, there's one thing I also realize and understand. The Father, at this time of the year, when we talk about joy especially, there are so many people, Father, who have been through trauma. They've been through grief. They've been through hurt. Lord, there's no doubt there are many good, good people here this morning. Father, that love you. 
that, that have no sin in their life, that, that they're just going through some discouragement. Father, they're going through some disappointment. They've been hurt. And Father, I pray the joy that you offered to the angels that night will be given to them today. Father, that they would no longer walk in fear, but they would open their hearts and lives to the joy that you have for us. I pray, Lord, for that one who may be here, <clears throat> God, that had been to church in a while. And Father, I I'm asking you, Lord, just to minister to them and talk to them. Let them know, God, how much we and how much you love them. I pray, Father, for one who may be here that doesn't know your son, Jesus Christ, as their personal Lord and Savior. Father, I pray they would really feel the presence of joy. And God, that they would realize that you're here right now. You care for them and you love them. And Father, we're going to thank you. We're going to praise you for everything that you have done, you're going to do now and throughout this week. For we ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen.